Notes today are about phantoms for me. So a hypothesis test for me. I'm going to say like 90% of it is the same. So about 10% changes. So I thought it was best if we just do an example. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Here's the example that you're doing. It says the level of dissolved oxygen in a stream or river is an important indicator of the water's ability to support aquatic life. A researcher measures the dissolved oxygen level at 15 randomly chosen locations along a stream. Here are the results in milligrams per liter. So that's what you guys have. A dissolved oxygen level below 5 puts aquatic life at risk. So the question is, can we conclude that aquatic life in this stream is at risk? Carry out a test with alpha 0.5. 0.05. Okay, let's just jump right in. P still stands for parameter. What is our parameter in this case? Mu. mu. So I'm going to say let mu be the population mean. Dissolved oxygen level in this stream. For H, I'm going to say define the hypotheses as follows. Our null is going to be that mu equals 5. And then the question is, can we conclude that aquatic life is at risk? So we're looking for evidence that life is at risk. When would aquatic life be at risk if mu is what? Below Less than 5. So in words, the alternative, why I care, is this means aquatic life will be at risk. You can say the dissolved oxygen level is less than 5, but what it, why we care is that aquatic life is at risk. Mu equals 5 means that the aquatic life is not at risk. Uh, so for A, let's check the assumptions. First assumption, random sample. Um, question says 15 randomly chosen locations. So this is stated. Second assumption. Partially normal sampling distribution. Approximately normal sampling distribution. Like panic, there's three ways to check this. What is the preferred way? Is it big enough for CLT? What's the second way? What Samuel just said. Population, Population is normal. That's ideal. Write that down. Population is normal. <coughs> I didn't tell you that. What's the second way then? The population is not normal. What's your next resort? And it's greater than 30, which is the central limit there. That is not the case here. What is the last option? Draw a box plot. Okay, draw yourself a box plot. You're going to need all of this data in the calculator anyway, so you might as well put it in now.
you're done, calculate the sample mean. I want to just make sure that we all have the same sample mean. <coughs> Do you have one? I got 4.7713. Okay, so your sample mean should be 4.7713 and then the three repeating. If you got that, then your data is entered correctly and you need to calculate a box plot. This is the box plot on top. You guys are probably not dead far yet, are you? This is the box plot. Remember the sentence that we should write for checking this assumption? Okay, better yet, what are we looking for in the box plot? Skewness or outliers. Okay, there's not extreme skewness or outliers here, so what do we write? Okay, so because the distribution of the sample not show extreme skewness or outliers. In parentheses, I'm going to put as seen in box plot. The sampling distribution is approximately normal. Assumption. Ten percent. Ten percent rule. So your sample size has to be less than ten percent of the population size. On the homework that you guys turned in yesterday, a lot of you plugged in random numbers for big N. You most of the time you don't know big N. So the nurse Gilbert example we did, in this case we don't. You don't know the population size. So instead you plug in for little n, which our sample size is fifteen. That would mean that big N has to be greater than 150. Then I want a sentence. If sampling without replacement, it's reasonable to assume or to believe There are more than 150 Okay, and we sampled locations along a stream. So there have to be more than 150 locations along this stream. You have to mention the sampling without replacement, and you have to say that this is either true or it's reasonable to believe. Questions? Okay, so for N, I am conducting, what's the first thing we need to say? A lower tailed. What do you think the test name is called? Large sample. 
largest for proportion. One sample. One sample. Hypothesis test or population mean using, here's one of the big changes. For mean, you are using the T critical values table. With 14 degrees of freedom. So n minus 1. So in this case, n is 15, so subtract. Okay. Here is another difference the test statistic changes. There are two t test statistics based on whether or not you use t or z. Do you guys remember the difference between using t and z with a panic? Oh, of the population. So here are the two formulas. In this case, are we going to use T or Z? T. T. So in our case, it's going to be T equals X bar minus mu all over S over root N. If you know the population standard deviation, it changes to Z and then it's sigma. In the case of Z, it's now the standard normal table and there are no degrees of freedom. So T critical values table, standard normal table. Okay, so this is why I said you're gonna need all that information in a list, is you have to go calculate X bar and S. So if you do one of our stats, that should, stuff should come up. I got 4.77 for the sample mean and 0.94 for the sample standard deviation. Yes. Okay. I would like you to calculate this and find the T value, but I want you to use the stored values. Don't type in 4.77, go and find X bar. As a reminder, that's under VARs. T to be negative 0 0.943. Somebody verify that? Okay. So that's the T. Am I moving too quickly for us? Yes, no, no. Okay, O is our diagram or our output. It's going to be a normal curve. What goes below the zero? Mu. Mu. So from the null, which is five. Okay, this is the standard deviation. Which is about 0.25. Okay, so we need to label our negative 0 0.943, which is about here. Below that, you're going to put the sample mean, which is 4.77. Now you need to shade. Which way am I going to shade? Left, because it's lower bound or lower tailed. Next, we need our p-value. So we need to calculate the probability that t is less than or equal to negative 0 0.943. Okay. We need to 
take out your table, the T critical values table. So here's what you're going to do. Ignore that. Okay, so we're going to go to 14 degrees of freedom and find where our T value occurs. Now, our T value is somewhere over here, negative 0.94. That's not on the table, so you're going to look at positive 0.94. Less than negative 0.94 is the same as greater than 0.94. So our value will fall in between those two. That's where our T value will fall. That means our p-value is somewhere between 0.15 and 0.2. That's all you're going to say. You're not going to say what it actually is. So it's going to look like this. It's between 0.2 and 0.15. What do we do next? Oh, yeah, you guys didn't tell me to put alpha up here. Forgot to put that in N. Alpha is 0.05. But yes, next thing you want to do is compare your p-value to alpha. So next, you're going to say that 0.15 and 0.2 are both greater than 0.05. In this case, that means that we are going to fail to reject the null. Questions before we write a conclusion? Nicola? What would happen if like one of them was like greater than 0.05? You're not gonna have that. Because 0.05 is on the table. Okay. Here's a conclusion. So based on my analysis, I failed to reject the null. There's not enough evidence that the population mean is off the oxygen level is below five. So there's not sufficient evidence that aquatic life is at risk. Any questions? This should pretty much be the same with a few slight changes. No questions? Okay, last thing. 
Um, I do not like using the table to find the p-value since it doesn't give you an exact value. Would you like to know the way to find the exact value? Okay, take out your calculator. Any guesses? Where did we go to calculate the p-value for proportion? What did we do? We did normal CDF, so we did the same spot, second distribution. It's not normal this time, though. So which option do you think you're going to choose? TCDF. TCDF. So for normal CDF, you put in lower bound, upper bound, mean, standard deviation. Uh, for TCDF, T is solely defined by degrees of freedom. So you're going to put lower bound, upper bound, degrees of freedom. So in this case, negative 1 times 10 to the 99. Comma. Negative, what was it, 0.94? Yeah, 0.943, comma, 14 degrees of freedom. That should give you a p-value of about 0.18. Yeah, you get that? Okay, so I don't care which way you find the p-value, either use the table or use TCEF, I don't care which one. Are we all satisfied with one of those two ways? Wonderful. Any questions before we do an example on our own? Yes. 